how to grow without raising funds. Sure. I think, I mean, there, there are multiple different perspectives, right? I think you also have to decide, like, figure out what business are you in. I mean, I'm, uh, you, there are two kinds of business, right? B2B, B2C. I think B2C is harder uh, or D2C. Now that's what everybody calls them, D2C. Mm -hmm. That it's harder to build a profit, uh, like a profitable unit economic company because a lot of times you sort of have to invest in creating that brand uh, to buy the customer initial days, right? Uh, I think B2B, it's, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's relatively easier compared to a D2C or a B2C brand, right? Versus what is versus B2C uh, in B2B. I think it's more predictable to, to do that. Now, again, you need to think about like how you want to go about it uh, in terms of the structure of uh, the markets you're sort of entering. Do you, and what kind of a company do you want to build, right? Like, do you think you want to build a bootstrapped, you know, smaller team scale size of a company? And there are a lot of companies uh, that are doing it and, and there are communities around this you know, where, you know, they talk about how they've gotten to, you know, five, 10, $10 million bootstrapped in revenue, right? So I think if you need to first decide, like you be clear of what sort of direction you want to get in. I think the path has to be clear and the style has to be clear day one in terms of, do you want to run that sort of a company or do you want to scale the company, have a larger team and, and, and go from there? I think those questions to be uh, asked are, are, you have to have clarity around that. That's point number one. So point number two is once you understand, let's say you're on the second piece, which is around building a larger team and being able to scale from that. I think it is important to then figure out how are you going to get your customers? Like, do you have a way to get customers uh, that does not require you to spend a lot of money? I think that's very, very critical. And you have to be smart about that. I think in the 2010s and in that era of that, that decade, rather, uh, we saw a lot of folks talk about, you know, growth hacking, uh, right? Uh, building your organic motion, uh, minimal vi viable product, minimal viable startup. Like, there was a lot of that happening, you know, in, the, in that decade, right? Uh, I think it's much more difficult now to do all of that. So you'll have to figure out how can you figure do some of that uniquely. For us, we initially figured out or we piggybacked on, I can talk about how we did some of that, right? Uh, for us, what worked is we did not try to create a market. They were market leaders already in place, right? Uh, so what we did is piggyback on them creating the market and educating a lot of folks in the market, right? And then we piggybacked on their brand. So, so basically say, how do we be the leading alternative to somebody who's looking for you know, that brand's alternative. Like that's what we did in the initial days. That worked really well for us because they were educating the customers and the market and the brand as, as a B2B player. And in our business, in the platform play, right? Like think AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft mm -hmm. Azure, like usually companies who are scaling don't want to use one vendor, one cloud, mm -hmm. right? They want to use multiple clouds. So that worked really well for us because somebody's educated the market. They're starting to spend money and they're starting to use these services. And then they need another provider. And then we showed up. Right. Mm -hmm. So that worked really well for us. So I think you have to go back and think in your business, what can you do? So this was our growth hack. If I had to sort of think about it that way, right? So I think you have to go back and think, what can you do uniquely for your business or what do you understand uniquely about your business? Uh, and what can you apply to it from a distribution perspective that uh, you don't have to go spend a lot of money. So we decided early on, we will not spend money in educating the customers and create a market, right? We were very, very clear on that. In fact, we're launching three more products now to the market right? and we're taking the same play. We don't want to go educate the guys on like those markets. We picked large existing markets, right? And we're saying, okay, which means by default, you'll have a competition and we're fine with that, right? But we then need to figure out how do we differentiate and then go plug ourselves in there. Like that's our play and we want to just repeat that. So that's our playbook. I don't know if this is uh, any, every, every founder can just blindly go copy that. I think you will have to figure out who's your audience, which market are you in? Is it? An existing market or are you creating new markets and then you got to figure out what the playbook is for growing profitably.